If you're trying to find delta H for a certain reaction, one of the ways you can do it is called Hess's Law. Hess's Law says the overall delta H for the reaction you're studying is simply the summation of any steps for that reaction. So here's an example. We're trying to find delta H for this overall equation. And we're given three possible reaction steps. And we know delta H for each one of these steps. So to find delta H for the overall reaction, what we have to do is modify the steps so that when we add the steps together, it gives us the overall reaction we're looking for. And so a systematic way to do this is take a chemical that shows up in the overall equation, such as oxygen. Oxygen, we look for it in the steps. Oxygen does not show up in step number three, but it does show up in step number two, and it shows up in step number one. Because it shows up in multiple steps, we're going to ignore the oxygen. It will work out on its own, but we can't use that as a deciding factor. We can use a chemical such as carbon dioxide in this example because the only place carbon dioxide shows up is in step number two. Once we find a chemical that only shows up in one step, that chemical is going to tell us what to do with that particular step. To figure it out, you ask yourself two questions. Is the chemical in the step on the correct side of the arrow? And in this case, it's not. We want it to be a reactant, but in the step, it's a product. So that means we're going to have to flip step number two around. The second question is, is the coefficient of the chemical correct in the step? In the overall, it's a one, and in the step, it's a one. So the coefficient is fine. We don't have to make any changes to that. So we're going to take this step and just flip it. We're going to turn the products into reactants. And when we do that, delta H keeps the same value, the magnitude is the same, but the sign is going to change. This reaction, the way it was written in the step, is exothermic. When we flip it, it becomes endothermic. So a negative 527 becomes a positive 527. Then we want to continue the process to find the chemicals that are going to tell us what to do with step number one and what to do with step number two. So for example, we can take the chemical H2O liquid. The only place it shows up is in step number three. So we ask those same two questions. Is it on the correct side of the arrow? And it's not, so we're going to have to flip step number three also. And is the coefficient correct? We want the coefficient to be a 2. The step has a coefficient of 1, so we have to flip it and multiply by 2. So if I flip this one, I'm going to get the water liquid on the reactant side and the water and the gas state on the product side. Delta H changes from a negative 44 to a positive 44 kilojoules. So that's the flipping part. Now we also have to multiply by a factor of 2. So each coefficient gets multiplied by 2, and that means we also have to multiply the delta H value by 2. So this will change to a positive 88 kilojoules. Step number 1 is going to be found using methane CH4 because methane only shows up in step number one. Is the chemical on the correct side of the arrow? Yes, it's a product on both the overall and the one we're looking for. Is the coefficient correct? Yes, the overall has a one, the step has a one. So step number one is okay as written. We don't have to make any changes. If I just rewrite that step,
I haven't changed the value, so delta H is still a positive 276 kilojoules. If you made all the changes correctly, when you add together the modified steps, it should give you the overall reaction that you're looking for. And in this example, we can cancel out some things, like we have the same chemical on the product side and the reactant side. It has the same coefficient, so it'll cancel. We have H2O in the gas state, and we have two H2O in the gas state, so that'll cancel one of them. And then we have another H2O that'll cancel there. What we have left is carbon dioxide plus two water makes oxygen, and we have one oxygen in one step and another in giving us a total of two oxygens, and we have methane. That matches the overall reaction that we were looking for, which means we did our steps correctly, so now all we have to do is add together the three modified steps to give us delta H for the overall reaction. And if you add these three steps together, delta H works out to be 891 kilojoules.